One might think that the International Space Station would be an epicenter of advanced technology second to none on Earth. Well, you may be surprised to learn that while the ISS is a construction marvel, it's only just recently that NASA was able to provide the crew with the Internet. Even then, it's not an actual IP stream to the ISS, more of an Internet workaround. A software upgrade to the crew support LAN now allows the station crew to remotely access a computer on the ground connected to the Internet. From there, astronauts can browse the web, tweet, you know, do internet-y things. This is accomplished by using the station's high-speed KU-band antenna, which means that so long as the station has a KU-band connection, they should be able to connect to the box on the ground. Many people thought that the ISS already had an internet connection, as we've seen tweets from space, right? Well, sorta. Prior to last week, the ISS crew would send down their tweets to Mission Control in a big data dump, who would then relay those messages to Twitter. Now, the space station astronauts have the ability to directly update their Twitter account, Facebook feeds, and download Space Vidcast without the need of Mission Control. Although, I'm not sure how well Space Vidcast will play in a remote connection. Keep in mind that the ISS orbits the Earth every 90 minutes or so. Unlike here on Earth, where you'll have a static connection, the station will need to jump and hop through multiple relay stations as it orbits. Of course, with today's technology, that feat isn't terribly hard. So why then do we have to rely on a box sitting back on Earth rather than feeding the ISS directly? I'm thinking NASA's worried about security and viruses and maintenance of the box. It is certainly hard to do IT when the box is flying at 17,500 miles per hour and 250 miles overhead. Not many people think about getting an internet connection into space. If we're going to be setting up lunar and Martian colonies, don't you think that these people would want to be connected to the internet? This isn't an easy task, even if we can get a connection to the moon. Due to its distance, the delay would not be ideal for a standard transmission control protocol used today. Mars is even worse. It would take over three minutes for a single packet to reach Mars, and another three minutes for it to come back. That means that the Martians who go to spacevacast.com will have to wait at least six minutes before the page even begins to load. Getting live internet on the ISS was a good first step, but we still have a long way to go if we truly want to become a spacefaring civilization. It may be a future astronaut or scientist still in school today that solves this problem. Join us this Thursday as we talk with Brad Cheatham about WeWantOurFuture.org an organization designed to motivate our youth to create the future of space exploration. Due to scheduling conflicts, this show will not happen in its normal time, but rather an hour to 90 minutes later. Watch our Twitter account or website for more information, and we hope we'll see you there.